I got this 2.5 gigabit ethernet card working on the Raspberry Pi Compute Module 4. And unlike my previous video, this video didn't completely blow out my budget, but I still hit a few bumps. First, I decided to vacuum my office. It was going pretty well until the vacuum sucked up my compute module power adapter and shredded the cable. Luckily, a quick solder fix did the trick, but it won't win any awards, especially not the award for using the correct size of heat shrink. Second, right after I got the card working, I tested it in an external powered PCI Express riser and that test released the card's magic smoke. Here's a dramatic reenactment by Redshirt Jeff. What is this magic smoke, you may ask? Well, watch from one minute on in AVE's latest Bolter video that's linked in the card above me. Anyways, buying a second card wasn't too bad since it's only 20 bucks, but to get it to work on my spiffy new 10 gig network, I also had to buy a new transceiver and that cost 60 bucks. I'll get to 10 gig networking more in a future video, but on that topic, I still didn't have any other computer on my network with a faster than gigabit interface. So I thought, why not toss in a $150 Thunderbolt 10 gig adapter on my MacBook Pro? Anyways, I finally had all the hardware lined up and my wallet was a bit lighter, so it's time to see how the card does. But wait a second, I can hear you commenting. Didn't you already get 4.15 gigabits through the Intel i340 card a couple months ago? Well, yes, that's true, but that was in aggregate through five different network interfaces. And while you can bond interfaces sometimes, life is simpler with a big fat pipe. And 2.5 gigabits, as I'll demonstrate later, is probably about as fat a pipe as the current BCM2711 Raspberry Pi processor can actually support. I plugged the card directly into the 1x slot on the I.O. board and ran LSPCI, and the card showed up. D-message logs showed the card didn't have any trouble allocating bar space either, so from a hardware perspective, we're good to go. But as with the Wi-Fi 6 chip from last video, if I ran IP address, the Ethernet interface didn't show up, which meant it was time to find a driver. And I tried the driver from Realtek's website, but I had trouble compiling it, so I decided yet again to recompile the Linux kernel. And seeing as I recompiled the kernel over a hundred times this past month, I had to optimize the process. I'm saving some of my work for a future video dedicated to compiling the kernel, but for now I'll say I cut down the average time to recompile from about 30 minutes to about 11. Not bad. If you're interested in the general process, check out my last video on Wi-Fi 6 on the Pi where I explained it in depth. You do the same thing, but this time instead of enabling drivers for Intel's IWL Wi-Fi driver in menu config, you enable drivers for the Realtek 8125 chip, which is inside device drivers, then network device support, then ethernet driver support, then Realtek devices, and finally select the option Realtek 8169, 8168, 8101, and 8125 Ethernet. I cross-compiled the kernel, copied it over to the Pi, and rebooted and found some encouraging new dmessage logs. First, I saw there was a message about being unable to load firmware, but that didn't actually cause any problems since the Realtek firmware package was already installed on the Pi. So then I checked IP address, and look, cute little ETH1 showed up. I didn't even have to patch the driver this time. So I plugged in a network cable and bingo, lights on the card and a good connection after a few seconds. So I ran a speed test to my Mac over my gigabit network using iPerf3, and it performed admirably, putting through around 940 megabits. And that's the same as the internal gigabit network chip on the Pi can do. But for this card, one gig just isn't cutting it. So I pulled out my Microtik 10 gig switch, plugged in two copper multi-speed transceivers, and then plugged the Pi into one port and my Mac and its 10 gig Thunderbolt adapter into the other port. Everything was connected and it was time to see how fast this little Pi could go. I fired up iPerf3 and my first test showed just under two gigabits. That's not bad, but under two gigabits just feels like it's missing something. So I took inspiration from my Intel network card debugging. I learned from running ATOP that the Pi's little CPU just can't keep up with multiple gigabits of network traffic. To ease the load on the processor, I set the MTU to 9000 with the command sudo ip link set dev eth1 mtu 9000. To make a difference though, you have to make sure both ends support mtu 9000 or jumbo frames, so I also edited my max network settings. 
I went to the advanced settings for my wired interface, then to the hardware tab and configured it manually to use jumbo frames. Just as an aside, if you want to enable jumbo frames on the Pi's internal ethernet jack, you can't use IP link set. You actually have to recompile the kernel with a patch. If you want to do that though, I have a blog post linked in the description that explains the entire process. With the MTU set to 9000 on both ends, I ran the iPerf3 test again and got, wait, zero bits per second? Something must be wrong. Long story short, my MicroTix switch was configured as a router with ports limited to MTU 1500. I could have set the ports higher in the router config, but instead I just switched over to the MicroTix switch OS. So another networking lesson learned, if you want to use jumbo frames, you have to consider every network device in the path between your computers. So now that jumbo frames were actually a thing on my little baby 10 gig network, I ran iPerf3 again, and this time I found a much nicer result, just about 2.5 gigabits per second. Much better. But hold on a second. I used ATOP and found that the bottleneck for regular sized Ethernet frames was the CPU's IRQ interrupts. Since the interrupts are tied to one of the four CPU cores, wouldn't overclocking the Pi help too? Well, I'm glad you asked because yes, overclocking actually does increase network throughput. I set the MTU back to 1500 and I enabled a 2.147 GHz overclock by editing the boot config.txt and rebooting the Pi. After the reboot, I ran the test again, and this time I was seeing speeds around 2.3 gigabits. So it was a 20% network speed up from the overclock. That's not bad. But if you just need raw throughput for large files and your network supports it, jumbo frames are the only way to fully saturate the network interface. I even tried distributing IRQ interrupts over multiple cores, but it seems impossible to do that on the Pi. Even if you don't change anything, getting 2.3 gigabits with an overclock isn't that bad. That's almost 300 megabytes of data per second. The last test I ran was bi-directional throughput. I had to compile iperf3 from source to run this test since the version in the PyOS software repository is too old. You need iperf3 3.7 or later. I downloaded the source code with wget, went into the source code directory and ran configure, and then I ran make, and then I used the compiled binary inside the source directory. Since both the Pi and my Mac have full duplex network interfaces, traffic should be able to flow in both directions simultaneously. Unfortunately, it seems the bandwidth to and from the Pi isn't quite symmetrical. The received traffic was still showing about 2.5 gigabits, but simultaneous transmit was limited to 100 megabits. Async transfer rates aren't a big issue for most use cases though, so I'm not too worried about it. I also ran a couple UDP tests and the Pi could pump through 2.5 gigabits without issue. Bidirectional though, a lot of packets were dropped if operating at full tilt because the Pi just can't keep up with the insane amount of packets getting blasted at it from my 10 gigabit Mac. And you might be wondering at this point, why is Jeff testing all these different network cards? Don't worry, you're not crazy. My wife keeps asking me the exact same question. If you wanna keep these experiments going, please subscribe and support this channel on Patreon or GitHub. Until next time, I'm Jeff Kierling. Oh, I need the card. Magic spoke. That's on a bike. The Ethernet. It's the Ethernet. Jumble frames. That's when you jumble two frames together, I guess. Over 9,000! So it was a 20%. Oh, my voice just stopped. Ooh.